reefs are some of the most diverse and valuable ecosystems on Earth. They provide homes for fish and remove carbon dioxide from the water. Bay. When you talk about <laughs> Queensland corals, not many people necessarily think about Moreton Bay, but there are some amazing <laughs> subtropical reefs that we're going to be visiting here today. Um, the other really unique factor about Moreton Bay is that it's a transitional area, so you get some of the tropical species that you find up on the Great Barrier Reef, and you also get some of the cooler water species that you find further to the south. And it's these corals that we're checking out today. So corals are important for a variety of reasons. They help to make some of the most diverse places on the planet and the, the stony skeletons from, from coral actually help to build these really amazing complex communities that provide homes for lots of other marine life. Cool, and we've got lots of gadgets down there. We've got gizmos, we've got cameras, we've got satellite imagery. Uh, what, what's the deal with that? What are we doing with it? Yeah, so um, we're here running a citizen science project here about remapping the extent of coral in Moreton Bay. Um, the idea is that we are using high resolution images taken from the sky um, and then our volunteers are actually out here in Moreton Bay. They're going to hop in in a whole bunch of spots around Green Island and actually identify what types of corals are there and how much coral is there. Um, that gives us an idea of where the coral is concentrated um, and can make some really incredible maps that are, are useful for reef management purposes. Time to dive in and see what's happening down there. Oh boy, it's cold. <laughs> oh. <laughs> will be somewhere around 60, 65 percent. Uh, sand, some other uh, 25 percent. How ugly is this bask? <laughs> Manda, how good is this? Day out in the water, checking out all the reefs. What do we see down there? Well, we have, um, we've got a data sheet here. So on the data sheet, we record all our non-living substrates. So we've got different rock, sand, silt, so we take a percentage of each of those. Yep. Oh, and then we also have hard coral and soft coral, and we have all the different sponges and algae forms. Cool. And we saw a big plate coral right beneath the boat. Yes, so that's, uh, that's one of our um, hard corals, and we also have a big, massive um, uh, hard coral as well. Nice. Okay, well, let's get all this data back to the science on the boat. Thank you. Cool. Okay. All right, Chris, results are in. What have we found from today's survey? Well, you, you see here the different sites which, which we visited today, and where the, the volunteers went in the water. And basically at each site we now know a bit uh, what kind of uh, coral and algae there is. Every pie chart represents basically how much coral, algae or sand or substrate is there. Okay, so why is it important to know where the coral and the algae is? So, by keeping an eye on our beautiful Morton Bay, we can take care uh, that we look at how the health of the coral and the algae is and how that is basically an indicator for this environment. And that's why we need to keep on mapping this area. is the development in urban catchments and mud. So we get a lot of mud that comes off the catchment, which is where we live and where you play and where you go to school, and that all ends up in the waterways. The same with litter, you don't put it in the bin, it all ends up in the waterways. Then it can just break down, it hurts our flora, hurts our fauna, and this coral that you've seen today, this beautiful coral, it covers it with mud, it doesn't get any light, it dies. So by doing our bit here, we're helping these creatures out here. So I've come to 